Okay, so we are beginning this video on page 10. And you can see here it says line 719 and then line 720. So we're back in the normal numbering of the lines after this rather strange uncertainty about the line numbering that we had on page eight. Okay, so we're now back in normal line numbers. And we meet very briefly a new character, Akron. Um, and Akron, I've put in a comment here, he is not mentioned anywhere else in the Aeneid. So he's not someone that we need to know about. He's just a character who appears briefly as a victim of Mezentius. And the main verb that goes with him is venerat, pluperfect tense. So Akron had come de antiquis finibus, from the ancient boundaries of Corythus. So that's the genitive case. Uh, and then we're told he is a graius homo, a Greek man. Um, and he's also a profugus, an exile, leaving linquens, right? linquere is the same as relinquere, to leave behind, leaving um, infectos uh, hymenaios. Okay, now, um, hymenai are um, nuptials, right? It, it means a, a wedding, basically, a marriage. And infectus, uh, of course, we get the word infection from this, but here it's nothing to do with disease. Infectus um, is like known factus. In other words, not done, not complete. So leaving his marriage incomplete. Um, okay, so, um, which might mean various different things. I mean, it could mean, for instance, that he was engaged, but didn't actually complete the wedding service or something like that. We're not, uh, we're not told explicitly what Virgil means by this. Um, but the point is he has some woman uh, waiting for him back in Greece who he's had to leave behind for some reason. And, um, so what do we know about this man? Well, we know one thing that, uh, one thing we know is that he comes from Corythus, and I've put a note here on that. Corythus is a town in Etruria, right? It is an Etruscan town. So he is one of Mezentius's countrymen. He is from the same place or the same region as Mezentius, but he is clearly in the anti-Mezentius faction. And it's named Corythus after its founder. And nowadays this town uh, is called Cortona in Tuscany. Okay, um, so that's where we're talking about. So this is a Greek man uh, who's left behind a fiance or wife uh, and gone to Italy. Uh, but of course he will not end up, uh, uh, well, he will not end up back with this woman because he's going to be killed by Mezentius. Okay, and then we get in line 721, ubi, when, uh, vidit, he saw, uh, and the subject here is Mezentius. So when he saw him, hunk, far off, longe, adverb, um, miskenten, disturbing, stirring up the media agmina, the middle ranks, or you could say the middle of the ranks. Um, purpureum, which means um, purple, and it's an adjective which is agreeing still with this, well, it's agreeing with hulk, so it's referring to um, Akron. Okay, so purple, literally purple with feathers. In other words, purple on his crest, on the crest of his helmet. And et, uh, he's also purple with the ostro, uh, the ostro of his pacti conjugis, his promised bride, right? So pacti is a PPP. 
perfect passive participle that means having been promised and a conjugis uh, is a wife or a fiance maybe a bride here so um the point is you know he's, he's wearing these you know these purple feathers so he seems like he's quite rich he's got a lot of you know love of life and life ahead of him you know he's not just any ordinary soldier and he's also got this color ostro which is um literally in english heliotrope it's a kind of light purple color which is the color of love at this time right so in other words he's wearing this color as a symbol of his love for the woman who is back home and this is supposed to make us feel sorry for him because of course he's about to be killed um, and then we go into another simile, okay, which is marked by this word keu, which is just like sikut or velut, right? It means just as um, or just like. So that's taking us into a simile. So just like or just as often, saipe, an impastus leo, an unfed lion. And of course, um, Words like uh, pasta in Italian come from this, im pastus, without a meal. So just as an unfair lion, per agrans, traversing, uh, traveling through the um, stabula alta, the deep hiding places. And then we're told in brackets why he, the lion is doing that, for um, maddening hunger, vesana fames is urging him, Swadet, or is prompting him, okay? If by chance, si forte, um, he has spied, he has noticed, he has caught sight of, conspects it, a fugacem capream, a swift or fleeing or timid caprea, right? Caprea can mean either a row, R-O-E, which is a kind of deer, or it can mean a wild uh, she-goat. It's not quite clear here. Um, he has spied a timid row or out a stag, kervum, um, literally surgentem in cornua, means rising into its horns. So it's not quite, again, that's a slightly difficult phrase to convey in English, I said towering to the antlers. I think that roughly conveys the meaning of the Latin there. Um, so if by chance he has spied an animal like this, he rejoices, gaudet, um, hians, gaping, imane, monstrously, frightfully. This is what we call an adverbial accusative, right? Because we've got the adjective imane in the accusative case to function as an adverb. So uh, gaping frightfully and where bristles arexit, um, sort of bristles his comas, his hair, his mane, um, and clings, hairet, clings. Now I changed my translation a little bit here because Hyreo takes dative, so literally he clings to the flesh, visceribus, um, which is where the word visceral comes from in English. So clings to it in the sense that, you know, he's reaching out to touch it. Uh, he clings to the flesh, incumbens super. So super here, I think, is an adverb. So incumbens means crouching, and then super means over, or like over it, right? So you can see I changed my translation to make it a bit more literal there. He clings to the flesh, crouching over, or crouching over it, okay? And then, uh, and by the way, there's a very small, um, divergence between different manuscripts here. Some manuscripts have incumbens, others have accumbens. So I've put a note on that on the right here, but don't worry, it makes very little difference to the meaning. Uh, and in fact, you could translate them the same anyway. 
And then we get this phrase, titer cruor. Titer means foul, horrible, disgusting. And cruor is a word for blood, but it's a more um, poetic and elevated word than sanguis. So I translated it as gore in English to convey the, the sort of high diction, the poetic diction there. Foul gore literally washes, lavit, bathes uh, the lion's improba aura, cruel mouth, or you could say um, uh, relentless mouth or something. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that the line, line 728, um, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, line 728, just cuts off after the first two words, right? So all these other lines we can scan. Um, so for example, this line, you get visceribus super incumbens lavit improbatiter. So you've got your full six feet. Whereas here, this line, um, seven to eight, is impossible to scan, obviously, because what you get is o ra crew, right, you've got a dactyl, and then you've got a long here, but then there's nothing. And this is because the line is unfinished. And there are a few lines like this in Virgil, in the Aeneid um, in particular. We don't find this in Virgil's previous poems, um, like the Eclogues or the Georgics, but we do find some of these unfinished lines in the Aeneid. And presumably the reason for it is that Virgil dies in 19 BC without having finished the Aeneid, right? He's, he's written an ending to it, but we assume that after, the, after he, he wrote book 12, he would then have gone back and, and, and completed some of these unfinished lines. But because he died before that, we have them incomplete. Um, so we just have to leave that there. Um, and then the simile ends, and then we and then we come out of the simile with seek ruit mesentius, right? Thus rushes mesentius eagerly alacer, which is where the English word alacrity comes from, eagerly in densos hostis. Uh, into or upon the dense, closely packed enemy, hostis. And hostis here is actually accused of plural, so it's really like hostes. Okay, and then, um, so we've seen quite a few similes already with Mezentius, right? We've seen him as a cliff, we've seen him as a boar, and now we see him as a lion. And so let's go on a bit to line 730. Uh, our subject is in felix acron, unfortunate acron, is laid low, sternitur, present passive. Um, literally, he is spread, spread out on the ground, right? He is laid low and et, he tundit, right? Tun, tundere is like to strike, to hit, to thump something. He hits the Atram humum, the black ground, the dark ground. Um, calcibus, with his heels, ablative plural. Expirans, this is a present participle, literally as he breathes out. But I think here the idea of breathing out implies not just exhaling, but also breathing his last breath. So it also implies dying which is why I said expires in my translation. And quer, he cruentat. Now this verb cruentare means to make something bloody, to cover something with blood, right? So he bloodies the infracta tela, the literally broken spears, right? Now, and these spears are broken in the process of wounding him, right? These are the spears that have broken as they sort of went through his armor and so on. Okay. Um, 
And then we have the subject, we get at queer meaning and, and then the subject is idem, which means the same man, the same person, which in English is not very natural. So I just translated it as he, but this is referring to Mezentius. Uh, okay, so he, howed, um, which is a stronger version of no, and then dignatus est, he did not condescend. Um, Digno means sort of to consider it worthy to do something. He did not uh, condescend to sternere, to lay low um, Orodes. Okay, and Orodes, we don't know who he is. He's not mentioned anywhere else in the Aeneid. Presumably he is, well, he, he must be in the army um, that is against Mezentius. Um, and one thing we can see here is that he has a Greek name with a Greek accusative, Orodane. Um, so he didn't think it right or condescend to lay Orodes low while, he, while fleeing. So Fugientem is a participle agreeing with Orodane. Um, so he didn't think that was right, uh, nor, neck to give, dare, a caicum vulnus, an unseen wound. Okay, caicus can mean blind, so it can refer to a person who cannot see, but it can also refer to a thing that is unseen. So, or to give an unseen wound with a yakta cuspida, with a thrown blade. And yakta, so that's an ablative phrase, and yakta is a um, PPP, right? Having been thrown from yakera. So in other words, Mezentius thinks it would be undignified or embarrassing even to kill a man while he runs away or to, you know, throw something at him when he's not looking. He, he thinks it's, it's better, it's braver, it's more noble, it's more honorable to face this man head on, you know, face to face, which is exactly what he does uh, because he occurred, he ran, or he ran towards him, obvious, right, obvious plus dative means to meet someone, uh, and he ran to meet him, adverso, turn, so there's our dative, and it means turned towards him, so he ran to meet the man when the man was turned to face him, not when he was turned the other way, because um, Mezentius wants to do the honourable thing, so he did that, and he literally Say contulit, he brought himself together, right? He, he engaged him, he, he engaged, he, he brought himself into the fray, vira vir, man to man. Um, superior, melior, better, howd furto, not by stealth, but said by brave weapons, or in more natural English, by strength of weapons. Um, so we would use a kind of genitive there in English, um, where Latin just, use, uh, just uses two ablatives. So the point is, Mezentius doesn't want to beat Herodes by uh, cowardly means. He doesn't want to kill him while he's looking the other way. He wants to meet him bravely man to man. So this gives us a sense of Mezentius as a complicated character, right? Yes, he is impious, you know, he doesn't honor the gods properly, he is he's cruel, uh, he's bloodthirsty, he's been exiled by his own people, the Etruscans. Um, and yet he has, and yet we can sympathize with him right? Um, you know, because he's outnumbered in many ways, you know, he's, he's like a cliff holding out against uh, the natural elements. And also he is brave, clearly, you know, hence these comparisons to a boar and a lion that we've already seen. And we'll feel more pity for him later when his son Lausus is killed as well. Um, okay, so then, Tum, 
Um, nixus, this is a participle that means struggling or striving or having striven over super plus accusative, the cast down man, the cast away man. This is a PPP um, from the verb yakere to throw or ab yakere, right? So he, he um, having, having struggled over the man who had been cast down with um, posito pede, with planted foot, right? Posito is another PPP from pono ponere, to put or place. So with planted foot um, and with his spear, et hasta. Okay, so the image that Virgil is giving us is that Mezentius is pressing, with, pressing on um, Orodi's body to try to pull his spear out of the body. Okay, and what, and then he, he says something to his own troops, right? He says, viri men, vocative plural. Um, yake, uh, so, uh, sorry, altus, which means, can mean high or deep. I think here it means deep in the sense of, you know, deep, sort of deep down on the ground, right? So yaket altus means low lies, erodes. Erodes lies low, he lies down on the ground. Um, a pars belli, literally a part of the war, we might say a, a portion or a spoil uh, or a prize even of the war, howd, not at all, to be scorned, tem nenda, okay. Um, so this is a gerundive, which is an adjective made out of a verb, right? So the verb is temnere, to, to, to despise, to scorn, to reject, uh, okay? And temnendus is an adjective from that, which means to be scorned, you know, worthy of being scorned. So he's basically trying to encourage his men and say, look, look guys, you know, I've killed a roadies and, and that's a big thing, right? That's a, you know, that's a really good thing for us in this battle, basically. 